good morning dear audience uh, as you will remember in our previous lectures we talked about uh, cancer cancer fight cancer prevention and cancer chemotherapy today we shall add to chemotherapy uh, some other measures that will help our effectiveness in the fight against cancer you will remember that we were using different chemotherapy drugs uh, in different uh, combination chemotherapy against different types of cancer. And uh, especially in the first and second stages, chemotherapy is effective and it is uh, very possible to cure uh, cancer disease in the first two stages. But when we come to the third and fourth stages, it becomes difficult. It becomes difficult to cure the disease with only chemotherapy. Uh, combination chemotherapy, in many instances, gives us a, a remission period of three or four months at most, and after the treatment, the disease recurs easily. So. Uh, we have to find other ways to, to support the results of chemotherapy. In fact, uh, I shall talk now about a metabolic treatment of uh, cancer in addition to chemotherapy. Uh, as we know, uh, glucose is the main substance in securing energy to the cells. In the normal state, glucose enters the normal cells. It, bec uh, it is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and in many stages it becomes at the end pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid enters mitochondrium in the cell and uh, in, together with oxidative respiration we, ATP, adenosine 3-phosphate, is produced in, this, in the mitochondria and this serves as energy source for the normal cell. This is the normal situation. An, an investigator called Otto Warburg uh, in, the, in the early 20th century has found that can cancer uh, cells use in very increased amounts of glucose. So in this uh, picture, this is what we see in cancer. You see glucose enters the cancer cell, but in much, much increased amounts compared with the normal. It becomes again glucose 6-phosphate and then pyruvic acid, but the mitochondrium is uh, ill, so the mitochondrium does not produce sufficient ATP because of insufficient, inefficient oxidative respiration. So this pyruvic acid is diverted to lactic acid formation and lactic acid formation uh, causes the cancer cell to multiply. Another effect of glucose besides the cellular effect is it is increasing the insulin and insulin-like growth factor content of the cells. And insulin and insulin-like growth factor are also uh, substances that increase the inflammation and also the cancer, cancer growth. So, uh, when this uh, was uh, uh, discovered, people have uh, uh, started to think about ways of exploiting this particularity. In this uh, picture also you see a normal cell and a cancer cell with their uh, insulin glucose receptors. Normal cells take normal glucose amount and it has a normal number of insulin glucose receptors. But the cancer cell because of the uh, need of much glucose to enter to the cell is endowed with many, many more uh, insulin uh, glucose receptors. So, uh, 
people have devised some measures to exploit this particularity, especially people like Thomas Seyfried and Professor Pedersen. <coughs> These are both from United States. Have uh, proposed, in addition to standard chemotherapy, to use substances that will decrease the increased glucose utilization of the cell. Substances like deoxyglucose, bromopyruvate, dichloroacetic acid are in effect uh, substances which decrease the uh, use and entry of glucose into the cell. So, we, pro we propose with these investigators to use chemotherapy together with these substances and also with insulin chemotherapy. In addition to this uh, support of chemotherapy with these substances, we propose also a diet which is poor in carbohydrates, uh, some natural substances like omega-3, like curcumin, like vitamin D, substances which increase the immune, immunity of the body, S hyperthermia and hyperbaric oxygen, which also act against cancer and psychologic support of the cancer patient. So this is what we propose as an integrated treatment of cancer. Thank you for your patience, for your attention.